so we have a triangle. We're given three lengths here. A is equal to 4, B is equal to 5, and C is equal to 6. Okay. So now what we're going to do, first thing is just draw the triangle. I'll do my standard McLogan triangle. All right, now again, it's obvious we can't use the law of sines here because we obviously don't have an angle, right? Law of sines, you have to have a ratio. You have to have the comparison of an angle to its corresponding side. Agreed? Yes. yes? The law of sines, last class period. You have to have that. So therefore, you can see we're kind of stuck with the law of cosines. Um, now, we have three angles we could solve for. A lot of people want to do, oh, well, let's just go ahead and solve for A because that's what my formula sheet says. Agreed? But unfortunately, that's not the best idea. So our idea is because um, we could do that, and that would find you. That would f work with it. But um, typically, what we like to do is a lot of times it's easier to do the law of sines and, or law of cosines, and then you could also do law of sines. But the problem is, remember what we talked about at the beginning, if you do the law of sines, you have to be careful of the <coughs> ambiguous case, right? You have to be careful because, again, what is sine inverse going to give you? Only an acute angle. It's not going to give you if there's an obtuse angle. Agreed? So what we need to do, or at least there's two ways to do it. You could always do the law of cosines, which is a great, accurate way to always do the problem. If you want to do the law of sines, just make sure you, um, just make, sure you make sure that there is not any tubes, uh, there's not a um, obtuse angle option. So how can we do that? Well, if we're given three sides, if there is an obtuse angle, if there is an obtuse angle, which angle would it be? If one of these angles is obtuse, which one is it? B, right? Because the largest angle is going to have the largest side, right? Yes? Sorry, you're right. Thank you. So C is going to be the largest one, right? Agreed? OK, so then let's find angle C. If angle C is obtuse, then we know that it's, then we're, we don't have to worry about the ambiguous case, right? Even if angle C is not obtuse, let's say it's 80 degrees, we know there's not an obtuse angle. Like we know there's not another, another angle can't be obtuse because that would be, that'd be larger than 180. Agreed? So when you have side, 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 find the largest angle first, and then you can do the law of sines. Now, so our formula here, so we need to solve for C. So we're going to do cosine of C equals, and now all I'm going to do is rearrange these variables for C. So I'm basically going to swap the C and the A. So this would be b squared plus a squared minus c squared all over 2 times b times a. Do you guys see how I did that? I just swapped a and c. You, you could if you were solving for like if you were solving for b. We're trying to we're trying to find angle c. Right? So it depends it depends on what which problem you're doing. So again, when you want to solve for an angle, you're going to use this one. And now it's just a plug and chug operation. So we have b, which is 5, so that's going to be 5 squared, plus a, which is 4 squared, uh, minus c squared. And that's going to be all over 2 times b times a, 5 times 4. And remember, guys, though, this equals the cosine of c, right? So now we we'll just go ahead and type this in. Uh, obviously, some of this, these answers are relatively simple enough. You could do these without a calculator. But just to make sure that we have everything correct, um, I'll put in there. So we have 5 and then divided by 40 equals 0.125. Is that our angle? No, right? Don't say, oh, 0.125, that's your angle. No, it's the cosine of C is 0.125. So how do you find that? Well, all you're going to do is use the cosine inverse, right? Now, typically, what I like to do when a calculator, obviously, this answer, I could easily retype that. But remember, when you're using a, um, a calculator, you can always use the last answer. So I always like to use, or at least get in the habit of just typing in C equals cosine inverse of the last answer. 
So remember, there's a function on your calculator that you can just take cosine inverse, do the second cosine, and then do second answer, and then just take that last answer from there. Okay? Obviously, this again, this is easy to retype. But sometimes you have that, like with eight digits, you're not going to want to round in those digits, right? Don't round. Use the whole answer. So that's why you want to use that answer feature. So in this case, my C is equal to 82.819. Now, um, for this class, I'm going to have you guys round your angles to the nearest hole. OK? So we can round our angle to the nearest hole, which would be 83 degrees. So remember I said all other values round to nearest thousandth. For angles, we'll just round to the nearest hole. Fair enough? Unless it's told otherwise. right? Obviously, unless a problem says find the angle, round to the nearest tenth, then you do that. But if I don't tell you, you can round to the nearest hole. Now, there's my angle, 83 degrees. But again, I still need to figure out the rest of these, A and C. right? Now again, since this is my largest angle, I can go back to using the law of sines. Right? I can now use the law of sines to find C or A. Yes? <sighs> Sorry, I'm still getting that mixed up. But since that's the biggest angle, I don't need to worry about the ambiguous case. So now what I can do is I can use the law of sines. And however, if you do not want, if you're like, I'm not really sure, I'm not understanding what you mean by the ambiguous case with law of sines, then just do law of cosines. Could you now do law of cosines for B, cosine of B? And could you also do it for cosine of A and just find those? Actually, I'm sorry. All you need to do is find one more angle, right? And then you can use the, then you can subtract those two angles from 180, right? So could you just do the law of cosines with one more, just for one more angle? Yes. I prefer, now that I know I, I don't have to worry about the ambiguous case, I'm going to go ahead and just use the law of sines. So therefore, I now have a ratio. And I'm going to find, let's just find A. So I'm going to use this ratio, cosine of A over 4 is equal to cosine, jeez, sine over the sine of 83 degrees over 6. So then I'll do, oh, now before I do this, though, it's really important. Sorry about that. I forgot. This is the reason why I want to mention this. So here's the caveat with doing it this way. If you're going to use the law of sines, don't use 83 degrees. That's a rounded answer. Agreed? You have to use this whole answer. So what you should do then is store it. So what I'm going to do is, again, remember the storing feature. I'm going to store, and I'm going to call this alpha c. So even though law of sines is faster, you've got to make sure you use stored answers. The nice thing about using the law of cosines, you can just find that angle without having to store anything. Right? So you know, I'm telling, showing you guys both ways, because some people are going to want to do it one way. Some people are going to want to do it the other way. So law of sines is great, because it's usually pretty quickly. Like literally, you're just multiplying 4 times sine of c over 6, um, and then take the inverse of that. But you have to make sure you use c. Do not use rounded answers. So I store that, and then I'll do 4 times the sine of c divided by 6. And I get sine of a equals you know, 0.661437827.8. I don't want to type that in, but again, that's what a is. That's the sine of a, I'm sorry. So a equals sine inverse of that answer. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take si second inverse and then second answer. So that's what I want to be looking for on my calculator. And when I do that, I get 41.4. Zero 09 degrees, which is equal to 41 degrees, rounded. And then we can say angle, that's angle A. We already find C, so therefore B equals 180 minus A minus C. So I'll do 180 minus 83 minus 41. And that's going to be 56 degrees. And again, that is with rounding for the angles to a hole. OK? Does anybody have any questions on that? Just be very careful, guys. Um, you can use the law of sines. Just do not use rounded answers. Law of cosines is great, 
But again, people make mistakes when typing it in or they mix around the variables, right? So it really depends on what you think or what you feel is easiest to do and what you understand best. Um, some people just prefer to use a lot of cosines, which is great because that's the most accurate way. However, you can easily make mistakes by forgetting, like moving the variables around, <laughs> right? Whereas law of signs is really quickly, less opportunities to make mistakes, but then some people will, um, again, use it incorrectly, like when there's an ambiguous case, like they won't find the largest angle first, um, or they'll use rounded answers, okay? So whatever way kind of works for you. Um, a rule of thumb that I like to play off of 